Back in 2017, I played Dishonored for the channel. I didn't care for it. I thought maybe this type of stealth game was no longer compelling for me, but despite that, I always wanted to play the sequel. There's something about the Dishonored series, the artistry and world it takes place in, the superpowers, the drama, and the decision to play lethally or non-lethally. It all speaks to me, so I was hoping going into Dishonored 2 that there would be enough of an evolution of the positives of Dishonored to pull me back on board. Right away, I thought this was the case. Dishonored 2 plays brilliantly with the gamepad, and the tutorial not only shows off the stealth and combat mechanics, but shows off the relationship between Emily and Corvo. The intro when the throne room is attacked sets the stakes perfectly, and I was excited to play more. I love how it's now easy to turn a sword fight into a non-lethal takedown. In my time with the first game, I would find myself exasperated once discovered in stealth, and eventually just started butchering the guards instead of reloading yet again. While I appreciate the ease of the non-lethal option, I'm concerned about the non-lethal options for the characters who are mission objectives. In mission 1, I could either murder Mortimer Ramsey or lock him in Emily's safe room. Without the key, he would be trapped in there, surrounded by the wealth he desires but having no way to escape. I have heard that most of the first game operates in this manner. You can either kill the person you were looking to get rid of or arrange a fate worse than death. And this is supposed to be the low chaos option? Yeesh. Sadly, it didn't take long for my enthusiasm to wane. Dishonored 2 has the same stop-start gameplay as the first. I thought maybe this was my fault for not letting things play out once I had been spotted, seeing if I could recover from my mistakes. Trying that out in Mission 2, however, didn't make me enjoy the game anymore. I would get overwhelmed by guards and sent back to the last checkpoint. Now the game does have generous checkpointing, and it turns every short section of the streets into its own little puzzle box full of moving parts. I found sticking to the high ground and bypassing trouble while effective made me feel like I was missing out on exploring the world, especially when the heart was introduced and there were all these runes and bone charms everywhere. It's like I enjoy all the separate elements that make up Dishonor 2, the movement, the combat, the powers, the world, the story, the aesthetic, but as a whole I'm not having a fun time playing the game. I can't avoid mistakes and don't find the process of reloading and trying again enjoyable. Maybe I was right the first time, and this type of game just isn't for me anymore. I still want to try Death of the Outsider though. Third time's the charm. So despite my feelings about the game, should you play Dishonored 2? Well, if you enjoyed the first game, it's an easy answer. If you like stealth games, if you like games with a fantastical world and a well-told narrative, if you like the work of Arcane Studios and the immersive sim genre that gives you a box of gameplay systems to play with and see how they all interact, I think you should give Dishonored 2 a play. On the other hand, if you don't like the trial and error that accompanies most stealth games, and you'd rather not explore such an interesting locale by sneaking around and either killing people or knocking them unconscious, it might be best to look elsewhere. As always, I would love to hear what you think about Dishonored 2 and its video down in the comments. If you liked the video, why not buy me a coffee? There's a link in the description. If you'd like to help me in other ways, please give the video a like, share it on your favorite social media sites, or subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, I hope you're all having a wonderful day.